Hi everyone. Uh, currently setting up the consoles for the um, for all the video games and for the TVs, and well, it's been an enormous job. Uh, currently, I've got around the 105, 106 consoles connected up here. So that ranges from anything from retro consoles starting from 1970s in the 1970s, I should say, um, right up to PS4, Xbox One, Wii U. Um, and obviously I've got a number of consoles that, um, that are doubles, you know, like, you know, an Xbox for each TV here, Xbox One, Xbox 360, PS3, PS4. So there's a lot of setting up, a lot of HDMI cables, a lot of networking and all that. I've had um, Edge Magazine contact me and wanting to do a feature on me, which I was a bit, um, a bit taken back by, a very surprised and honoured because I actually love Edge Magazine and I used to collect Edge Magazine um, back in the day, in the 90s. Um, I think it was around the mid-90s, um, when the Saturn came out, that's for sure, so that's 94. So around then and, um, and, and I buy it now and again. So that's, that's really good and I'll obviously keep you up to date, but you know, keep a lookout for that. And it's gonna be um, a pretty um, in-depth uh, look at my room. Uh, the games and even other things like the arcades and maybe my RC cars and all that kind of stuff. So I've got here the PlayStation 4 Metal Gear Solid 5 PS4 and it's a beautiful, beautiful console. It's, um, it's, it's just such a lovely red or burgundy I guess you'd call it. And you've got the glossy part here and the matte um, there um, and obviously the bottom's matte. I like this, um, the gold the gold stripe down the console and the buttons. It's just really, really well done. Um, I don't know if any of you have seen the Darth Vader uh, PlayStation 4, but I personally think it looks pretty, pretty pathetic. Um, I don't think they really concentrated on that one and doing anything too fancy. I really think if you, in any Star Wars console that's come out, um, nothing Nothing is better than the uh, Xbox 360 um, when they did the R2-D2 in the console and the C-3PO as a control pad. Um, you know, I, I really love that console and um, I actually still use it even now in, on one of my TVs. In fact, Alex, when he comes over and plays with you, that's the console he's on. And it's, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's a lovely console. So at the moment I'm putting away PlayStation games and this is basically the PlayStation aisle I'd like to call it. All the PlayStation 1 games are going to be on these two shelves which won't show you too much at the moment. And the PlayStation 2 games will start from this top part and go all the way down. Now it's pretty much enough for a full PlayStation 2 library which is what I'm very very close to. I've got a lot of Japanese games which I've got in my hand now so it's the Virtual Fighter 4 and Virtual Fighter for uh, Evolution, Evo, and um, I'm just coming to terms with what to do to neaten up my collection. Um, I've got heaps and heaps and heaps of PAL games. Now in the US and Japan, they have black covers usually on the PlayStation 2 games. Whereas in Australia, um, and I'm not sure if England's like this, but I don't know, but you guys might just um, yell out and tell me, I haven't even bothered to look. Um, we have blue covers over here and it's all well and good to have them but when I'm putting them in alphabetical order um, I'm getting a lot of black with blue covers and I'm not I'm not loving it put it that way so I've actually decided to um, pretty much sell off all my PlayStation 2 PAL games and there's about the 700 800 a mark maybe maybe 750 somewhere around there I'm going to sell a lot of them off. I've got a lot of platinum ones as well, and they're different again. They're silver with um, with uh, a silver cover, and, and usually silver border. They've got the silver PS2 on the spine um, with the black then. Not, not over the moon about those games, to be quite honest with you. Uh, I really just prefer the American and Japanese style, and to have it all uniform, I really into uniform. I mean, I know sometimes you're you'll get a game like Xbox 360 has got a lot of good shooters that are Japanese release only, but at least it's uniform with the spine and how the game looks across 
you know, internationally, and I really like that. All right, so we're over the Commodore 64 area at the moment, and this is a really hard one to categorize. You've got games that are in big boxes, and you can't really start putting things in alphabetical order because you'll have big box games, and then you'll start to have these type of games, which are like you know, kind of big plastic um, case games. And then they go down to cardboard games, and then we move to double cassette games. Um, these double cassette games, they're, um, they're probably most common, apart from the single cassette, I've probably got more of them. But um, they're most common. It's all good to have maybe them in alphabetical. So but because you've got to go from big box to small box, it kind of gets a bit tricky. You can't have everything in alphabetical order. So I'm still trying to, um, trying to sort out that. I kind of like them in ways that I, I bought them at that time, so I'll put them in that order. But then it can, it can kind of get confusing. If anyone else wants to play, like my son Luke, I'm trying to get him in to Commodore 64. So, you know, uh, anyway. And these are, yeah, these are the, sil the, single, uh, the single cassettes. And um, they're just like any normal um, cassette um, that you would, uh, audio cassette that you would, you know, find in the 80s, really. Um, very, very common, and a lot of people did, is they would um, have a, a twin cassette deck or a, a dubbing, um, uh, dubbing player, dubbing recorder, and they'd put the Commodore 64 game and a blank um, cassette in there, and they would play on one and record on the other. And that's how they copy games a lot of the time um, on cassettes. So that was quite fun. I'm sure we've all done that. Anyone out there has had a Commodore 64 back in the 80s? Um, that was fairly done. And then this come along and obviously we had different methods like um, copying programs and whatnot. All right. Well, that's about it for me. Um, hope you've enjoyed. It's just a little... Um, just giving you something to understand what I'm going through. And it's not a simple case of uh, just starting to do a room tour. I want to try and have most of the stuff up. At the moment, I've still got over 1,500 games to actually put up on the shelves. And I really want to have them in the computer and uh, categorized before I um, place them on the shelves. It's just how I am. So it's unlikely to have every single thing up before Vlog 64, the, the full room tour, but I will definitely do something. Now, if you've got any suggestions that, that you want me to do or anything like that, please go ahead and um, comment. Um, go to uh, the Last Gamer website. That's just starting to take off now. I'm starting to get on that and, and clean it up a bit. And you can find an email link there, email me. Um, a big thing I'm going to start doing within the next, once this room tour is done, I should say, the next month, is I'll be getting onto reviews, and that's been a long time coming. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll get on to that definitely before Christmas. I should have a couple of reviews up. Hope you've enjoyed it, and keep gaming. Bye for now. God. This is God. Nightmare on Elm Street. Is that the one where the guy had knives for fingers? Yeah, Freddy Krueger. Freddy, that's right. I like that movie. It was scary. Wow, well, the first one was, but the rest sucked.